The Magic Detective, starring the world's greatest magician, Blackstone. Tonight he tells you the inside story of The Ghost That Trapped the Killer. And right after tonight's story, Blackstone will explain tricks that you yourself can perform. He will reveal the guarded secrets of the world's greatest magician. And now to Blackstone's magical studio. And what a singular place it is. But wait a moment. I'd like you to meet Blackstone himself. Good evening. I see that you're admiring my new cabinet. Yes, that's right, Blackstone. I was just going to mention those unusual bottles on that shelf. That's interesting because the two go together. I'll tell you about them in a moment, but first let me introduce my leading lady, Miss Rhoda Brent. How do you do? Oh, good evening, Miss Brent. Do you uh, disturb that cabinet? Oh, no, that's a ghost cabinet. You mean there's a ghost in it? There will be. Then where do you get the ghost? Out of those bottles over there on that shelf. Uh, that's right. Would you like me to manufacture a ghost right now? Well, well now, wait a minute. Uh, will it be a real ghost? Parker Harley thought it was real when he saw it. Parker Harley? Yes, the first man who ever saw the ghost trick. It was one of my strangest adventures as a magic detective. We were playing a town in New England, and I was in my dressing room after the final show when somebody knocked at the door. Who is it? Show him in, Mr. Blackstone. Oh, uh, show him in, Rhoda. Mr. Blackstone? Yes? I'm Sheriff James. How do you do? I uh, want you to solve a murder. A murder? But I'm a magician, not a detective. Well, it's going to take a magician to crack this case. Oh, how's that, Sheriff? Because you know who the murderer is and why he killed his victim. And you know how he committed the crime? Yes, ma'am, we know that, too. Oh, we think we do. Well, we can't prove anything. So that's why you need a magician more than a detective. That's right, Mr. Blackstone. Oh, it sounds interesting, Sheriff. Uh, tell me the tale. All uh, right, sir. It uh, begins with old Hiram Saunders, who died last week. Why, I read about that in the local newspaper. Oh, I saw a picture of the queer old house with all the gables where Mr. Saunders lived. Yes, and where he died, too, miss. I'm taking too much of the medicine that Dr. Talbot gave him. Well, it wasn't Doc Talbot's fault. Then whose fault was it, Sheriff? Well, I'm blaming Parker Harley, the caretaker. He could have given Mr. Saunders an overdose of that medicine as easy as you make people vanish, Mr. Blackstone. Well, thanks for the compliment, Sheriff. But if Parker is the murderer, what was his motive? Money. That's one. Well, but the newspaper said that Mr. Saunders died penniless. Well, that's what we thought, miss, until we opened the old cabinet up in his bedroom. Inside, we found a tin cash box with $5,000 in it. But if Parker was after the money, why didn't he steal it? Because he didn't need to. Turned out that the old gentleman left everything in his will to Parker Harley. Well, mm. then all Parker has to do is to go to the house and find the money. That's right, Miss. Perhaps he uh, already has taken it. No, not yet, Mr. Blackstone. Right now, Parker's at the lawyer's office claiming some of Saunders personal belongings. And is the key to the cabinet among them? That's right, Miss. Parker won't waste no time losing it either. Mm, then we'd better stop at the old house right now. Good. I got my car outside so we can get there ahead of Parker. Hey, how long's the house, folks? Oh, my, what a spooky place. Well, you may be right, Rhoda. That's what I'm going in to see about. Uh, wait. I uh, almost forgot something. Uh, hand me that package, will you, Rhoda? The one I got at the drugstore? Here it is. Thanks. Now, you wait here with the sheriff. Oh, uh, if I'm not back in ten minutes, uh, come in after. Uh, you, uh, what did uh, Mr. Blackstone say he was going to see about? Why, why, ghosts, I guess. He didn't say nothing about ghosts? Yes, in a way he did. When I said the place was spooky, he said that maybe I was right. Yeah. Well, what would he do haunt in the house with... Oh, Saunders' ghost, Sheriff. Oh. He was murdered, wasn't he? Yeah, yes, so was. And if there are ghosts, they're usually those of murdered people, aren't they? Sure, yes, yeah. that's right. And they often guard money, so I've heard. Well, Sheriff, there you are. Huh? Yeah, don't do that. What is it, Miss? That light. Yeah. In the window of the room upstairs. That's, that's Saunders' window. The room where he died. Oh, oh it's only a flashlight. Oh, drat it, then it's Parker. He got here ahead of us. No, no, it's Blackstone, Sheriff. Huh? 
looking at the window. Yeah, yeah, I see him now. He's beckoning to us. Come on, let's go up. Oh, give me the shivers. Yeah, well, it's cold, chilly out here. Come on in. It's warmer in the house. Come in, Sheriff. I yes. set the trap for Parker. Uh, a trap? I I don't see any trap. Well, you're not supposed to see it. Wait. I just heard something. So did no. I. Sounded like the front door. Turn off that flashlight, Sheriff. And listen. Yeah, yeah. Somebody coming up the stairs. Sounds weird in all this darkness. Hey, it's Parker. No, no, we, we, we don't want him to find us. He won't find us. Move back here in the alcove, Sheriff. Yeah, yeah. Going to the cabinet. He will after he lights those candles on the table. See? He's stopping at the cabinet. Now watch. He's found the tin box. Look, he's putting it on the table. Look. Look at the cabinet. The door is closing. Oh, shucks. That's not the miss. Just the kind that don't stay open, that's all. But there's something coming quiet, from Quiet, quiet. You don't want to disturb Parker or the ghost. Yeah. Ghost? That, what ghost? Saunders' ghost, uh, Sheriff. Don't you see it, Sheriff? Coming from the cabinet. Yeah, yeah. It is a ghost. Creeping out like a great big hand. Bigger than a hand, Sheriff. <laughs> as big as a pair of arms. It's creeping closer to Parker. Now it's as big as he is. Even bigger. And you can see right through it. Like a... Like a... Like a ghost. Girl. Quiet now. There's Parker turning around toward the cabinet. No, 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 no. Go away. Go away. I, I need the money. I, I don't want it. I, I don't want it. The ghost is coming. It's spreading all around him like it was a fog. Here's your box. Now, 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 you let me go. Let me go. Now's the time to grab Parker. Only you can't because the ghost already has him. Uh, 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 you hear that? He's going to confess. He has confessed, Sheriff. Look. Look. The ghost is safe. You can take Parker now, Sheriff. All right. All right. Come along, Parker. You kill the whole soul. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I kill him. I killed Saunders, and, uh, and, and his ghost came back. You better stick to that confession, Parker, unless you want the ghost to follow you. I will. I will tell you. I'll, I'll tell everything. Everything I know. Everything I know. Everything I know. Get me away from here. Uh, glad to oblige you, Parker. I got a nice jail cell for you without ghosts. Well... So that was the first performance of your famous ghost act. Yes, it was. A simple chemical experiment plus the imagination of those who witnessed it. Then there aren't such things as real ghosts. They're only as real as people imagine them to be. I manufactured the ghost from two of those bottles on the shelf. They were what was in the package. Two simple liquids that can be bought at any drugstore. Uh, watch while I make the ghost. First, a few drops from this bottle. They went into an empty ink well in Saunders cabinet. And from this bottle, a few drops on a blotter that I tucked in the cabinet door. And stormy smoke. More and more of it. It's creeping out just... just like... Just like a ghost, Rhoda. Growing bigger and bigger. Like the fear that gripped Parker Harley when he turned round and saw it. Yes, it's most amazing to think that a ghost could be produced so simply and so easily. <laughs> Not at all. I'll show you something quite as wonderful that could be done anywhere. While we're trying it, our listening audience can try it too. First, I need a nickel. Oh, very hard, Blystone. And next, a drinking glass. I'll get one. Good. Now, a paper match. While I light it and blow it out, I want you to balance the nickel on the table. Yes, balance the nickel. That's it. That sounds pretty difficult, but... Well, no. Oh, it's easy. Very hard standing. Now, bend the match a little and place it on the balanced nickel. Set it carefully. Ah, that's right. The bent match is resting on the balanced nickel. And what comes next? This does, the drinking glass. Thanks, Rhoda. Set it upside down over the nickel and the match carefully. Like this? Good. And now, 
Do you think you could remove the match from the nickel without lifting the glass? Oh, gosh, if I could, it would be magic. If a ghost, yes, it does look as though only a spook could manage it. But the trick's very easy. We need just one thing more. A magic wand? No. Something much more simple. Something you have in your pocket right now. And I'll be back in a moment to tell you what it is. And now, Blackstone, that trick of yours. All right. Now, remember, I said there was something else that would help. Yes, but what is it? That comb of yours there in your coat pocket. Oh, you mean this little comb I always carry? Mm Mm-hmm, that's right. Give it to Blackstone, and he'll show you how the trick is done. All right, and here's the comb, Blackstone. Thank you. Now, wait a moment. First, uh, run it through your hair to accumulate some electricity. All right. That's good. Now, move the comb slowly around the glass. I guess, huh? That's the way. Well, look. The match is turning, like the needle of a compass. That's right. And there goes the match, right off the nickel. Just as I said it would. There's the magic you and all your friends will enjoy. Just try it and find out. Until we meet again, this is Blackstone saying good magic and goodbye. <laughs> Be with us the next time when Blackstone, the world's greatest magician, tells us the story of The Reluctant Buzzsaw and explains more tricks that you yourself can perform. Listen again to The Magic Detective with Blackstone, the world's greatest magician.